We're going to tie a blue winged olive variant today. This is a size 18 wet nymph hook, straight shank, and I'm going to use some olive uni thread in A dot. I'm going to start about an eye length behind the eye, just to always be in the practice of not crowding the eye. Come back about halfway, trim off your tag, and come back here to about the hook point, just a bit past, and I'm going to use some olive dyed pheasant tail fibers. You can see the stalk is quite green, and then it's just subtle once you get up to the, the fibers itself. So I'm going to pick out four fibers. and stand them up straight up from the stem making sure the points are in line and tear those away okay for the tails I want them a little bit shorter than the hook shank so I'm going to measure those pinch some off and do a pinch and loop to tie those in and again so a pinch and loop you just bring the thread between your fingers and pinch it and I've got a loose, there's my loop right there. Then I can get the thread straight down and then pull it down between my fingers. And that way you keep things on top of the hook shank like so. Okay. Now I'm going to loosen up just a little bit because those are longer than I want them to be. And let's just adjust these slightly. There we go. And now I'm almost to the hook barb between the point and the hook barb. Okay. And that looks nice. So I'm going to trim these the full length of the body. Okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and tie in some wire ribbing material to reinforce my abdomen, which is going to be the crystal flash um, in an olive color. So I'm just going to use some fine black. There you go. Uh, ultra wire in small. I'm going to tie it on exactly in the same spot, just like you would like a pheasant tail. Oops. Little trick if you come down at a slight angle, keep a short working thread and catch it right on full length of the body. There we go. Okay, just used one turn there to minimize my wraps. Next thing I'm going to use, grab is some strands of clip crystal flash. I'm going to clip three away and even up the tips. Tie those on in a similar fashion. And then roll forward, tying all the materials down on top of the hook shank. You're going to have a little bit extra. Trim those down. The idea is just to not get any lumps and have a nice smooth tapering abdomen. Okay, I'm going to come back here where I want the thorax to be. I'm going to counter rib this crystal flash material, so I'm going to wind it towards me underhand. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, don't let go of it. Tighten up. We all make mistakes, right? Okay, now I'm going to hold those nice and tight at an angle and cross over them. Okay? I'm going to use the thread to cross over those and wrap on the hook shank. Use the thread again to cross over those and then on the hook shank a couple times. And that's going to lock them in. Okay. There we go. So next, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my wire. First, I'm going to pull forward, get my tails looking nice, and then start wrapping regular direction, evenly spaced, on top of that crystal flash, and this is going to reinforce it. I was fishing these flies last week successfully by the way and uh, 
I noticed that I needed to add some ribbing or some curing UV glue I could also do but this time I'm using the rib for segmentation purposes um, anyway the crystal flash started kind of coming apart on me after a few fish it started unraveling and coming down the back of the shank on the tails so having this wire wrap in and starting it right back there at the back um, it's gonna hold everything down even if one breaks it, it's not gonna unravel on you okay so I'm gonna come back here where I want the thorax I'm gonna use some crow feathers that I found actually just on the grass and uh, these are nice little feathers and I'm gonna go ahead and just use my scissors to split out nice little chunk there and hold those sorry I've got a black shirt on today alright once I get those trimmed how I want them I'm gonna even up the tips and tie those in on the side of the hook shank. When I say on the side of the hook shank, I mean facing me, because whenever you're tying a flat piece like this, you want a nice short bobbin, unravel your threads, your thread wraps, by spinning the bobbin counterclockwise until the thread looks fairly smooth and flat. Now if I lay these just slightly towards me and then use a loose wrap to roll them up on top, well, what happens is it rolls them right on top of the hook shank for you. In fact, those ones split, but it's no big deal because I'm going to lay them back down and force them the way I want them to go. Get rid of one of those. Look where I want the thorax to start and clean up. Okay, so we're tied in. It's going to be nice and on top when I'm done, and it's going to turn out nice. Okay, so for the dubbing, I'm going to use Life Cycle. And it is Peacock Nymph. And I'm just going to use little bits, okay? I have just little frail, you know, little fuzzies that will float if I let go. I'm just going to start covering the thread. There's nothing worse than just putting too much dubbing on and having a big old curly cue come off because it won't stay on the thread. So just Build it up, fairly tight, nice little rope, inch, inch and a half long, and begin wrapping that thorax right back to where you want the wing case to start. And it's going to be slightly bulbous and end in front, just like so. Okay. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is grab some white Zelon, and here's a full strand I've taken out about a third of it okay and that's what I'm gonna use for legs gills and wings on this fly I, I think it kinda imitates all of them and I got this idea from Kelly Gallup out of Montana and he's a great tire I watch him all the time and thanks for this idea Kelly alright I'm gonna tie these I've turned the the vise so that I can just set these right on top and pinch and loop bam catch them right on the side two wraps fold them over and slightly down so over and down to catch on the other side and come back leaving room for a head before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and pull this wing case crow material over and I'm going to encourage it to lay flat for me. And with the left hand wrap, set that over, keeping tension on the bobbin at all times you can see the hook wiggling. Now I'm back into my right hand. Three up there, one or two in front. That'll pinch them up like that. Come in and trim off close as you dare. And cut your thread wraps. Okay. <clears throat> now just build up a little thread head covering up the fibers.
Okay, grab your whip finisher. And three or four whips, pull it nice and tight. Come in and trim away your thread. Not quite done yet, obviously. Got a major stragglers here. So I want to trim these. I'll try to do it so you can see. As wide, as long as the abdomen. Let me get one of these done and I'll turn it and show you. Okay, that one's as long as that abdomen is. And then I'm also going to, while they're sticking straight out, I'm going to go ahead and cut horizontally towards the hook shank to taper them like that. Okay, I just think it looks a little better. Same thing to the other side. This side's easier because it's facing me. And again, alongside the hook shank while they're at slightly an angle. There we go. Okay, uh, an olive head is fine. I, I've noticed a lot of the more mature bugs have these dark backs when they're getting ready to hatch, like this thorax cover. So I'm going to use a brown sharpie here. Okay, I'm just going to color the head dark brown. Uh, you could be asking why not black everything else was. Well, I don't know. Variation, it looks black anyway. And maybe the light will catch it slightly differently. And just give a little bit of variation, maybe blend in with the tails, I don't know. I just choose to do that. So, you can see we've got those nice ribs with the black wire that we've got on there securing, giving us visual look and securing our crystal flash. Some nice tails, little bulbous thorax, uh, nice sized head there, and then these little guys, like I said, I think they're going to imitate gills, wings, and legs. And uh, you may think, wow, those are huge for a size 18 and stuff like that, but once they get swept back in the water and washed down, they actually they work out perfect. Like I said, I probably caught four or five fish last week in an hour and a half's time um, just searching with these uh, uh, on a low river. So anyway, the last step is you want your fly to be a little bit more durable. You can grab some runny head cement and coat the head of your fly. It's worth noting that this is a alcohol-based head cement. This is a fly-tight, non-toxic stuff. And uh, that will bleed in your, uh, in your Sharpies. So let them dry a little bit first, okay? And then you'll have more success, um, especially if you're doing something with a lighter body or, and you don't want, you know, that color, that head color bleeding out real well. Um, then you can... Just let it dry a tiny bit and then put it on and then the alcohol and things won't won't thin it out. So anyway, tie this blue winged olive. Um, one more credit I gotta give out to uh, Cheech and Curtis Fry from the Fly Fish Food YouTube channel. Um, they kinda got me going on this idea of using a flashy blue winged olive. I know there's variants everywhere, but I just wanna thank everybody I can and and spread on the, the ideas and, and help people catch fish. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.